Hello and welcome to College Planning Tip of the Week. I'm Nancy Steenson with Steenson College Coaching and with me is Jack Wang. So Jack, when people are looking to pay for college, they often think they have two options. They either have to have saved an enormous amount of money or they need to take out a lot of loans. Can you share with us some more creative strategies that you might have for paying for college? Yeah, thanks for asking, Nancy. Um, you're right, and there, there can be some more creative strategies, but first things first, as a disclaimer, this video is for education purposes and entertainment purposes only. This is not advice, so please consult your, your own financial or tax advisor. Also, the concepts I discuss here are still relevant, even though some of the numbers and the limits have changed, right? So again, if you're gonna do some of this stuff or think about doing some of this stuff, please consult an expert. A lot of people view sort of aid for college, right? Is like scholarships or financial aid. And then of course they have their savings or possibly taking on debt. But for a lot of these creative strategies, there's actually a, another pot of money that's available and that's the tax code or the IRS. Now people often think, oh, tax credits or deductions and stuff. And yeah, those matter, but I'm talking more about strategy. There are a number of strategies that families can utilize to save a lot on income taxes, which then would could be used to pay for college, right? Because it's otherwise money you would have to pay to Uncle Sam. So a number of these will combine different financial strategies, tax strategies, or even debt strategies where you intentionally take on debt. So years ago, I was working with a family and they're, they're rel relatively high income. And one of the parents got a lot of stock as part of his compensation, his, her, I can't remember, compensation plan at that particular company. And to pay for college, now, again, it was employer stock. So they did not have the money in the 529, which we normally associate with college savings. So their plan was to simply sell the stock to pay for college. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. But remember, the tax code, you can use it to your advantage. So I had suggested that they gift that stock to their student. At the time, they could gift, I think, either eleven dollars or $12,000 per gifter, which means that for two parents, they could gift over twenty-two dollars or $24,000 okay, per year. Now, that limit today is $16,000 per gifter. So that means that two parents could actually gift $32,000 over. And at the time, the, the student was a junior. So you could gift over yeah, I think it was like 22,000 and then senior year is 24,000 and then actually into college each year. So, so by the time the student finished college, you, they could have gifted over, over, uh, over a hundred thousand dollars of stock. But again, what would be the purpose? Well, it was very simple. If the parents sold the stock, they would be subject to a really high income tax rate, capital gains rate. But if the student sold the stock, they would pay very low capital gains rate. So that difference, that differential, right, was a huge amount of tax savings. So if you think about gifting over, you know, over time, over $100,000 worth of stock, you know, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars in taxes. So, it, you know, it's, it's a good amount of money here. Now, there is a provision that you have to watch out for even today. And that's something called the kitty tax, which is dependent, dependent students who have what's called unearned income. So capital gains, interest, dividends, things like that. So when you're subject to this provision called the kitty tax, it takes away a lot of this advantage. So that tens of thousands of dollars in taxes you might save would actually go away. So this is now where you can combine another element. Use debt intentionally. So pay for college using debt while, while the parents are gifting over this money each year. Then when the student graduates, they are now independent for tax purposes. That's when the student then sells off all these investments that you've gifted over, right? And pays a much lower capital gains tax rate because now they're independent, they're not subject to that kitty tax provision. That's the idea. So here, the family was going to sell the stock anyway, but instead of paying a really high tax bill, they could pay a really low tax bill and save tens of thousands of dollars in the process. And that is one of the, one of the more 
uh, sort of, you know, I suppose, I don't know how creative you want to say that is, but it's about understanding how these things work. And it is different than how most people think about it. In fact, that is a great creative idea that I hadn't thought of. And I really thank you for sharing that with everyone. I look forward to next time and perhaps you can share some more creative strategies for paying for college. Thank you, Jack. And thank you everyone for joining us. And we'll see you next time on College Planning Tip of the Week.